Hello everyone and welcome. It is uh, World Book Day 2021 and of course if we were in college at the moment uh, there would be a display up and we would have uh, the wonderful uh, printing press in uh, in the atrium and we would have lots and lots of stuff going on as a result. Uh, it's slightly different this year because we are remote but I am uh, very, very happy uh, and excited that to give us a little presentation for this World Book Day, uh, I get to introduce everyone to uh, Head of Humanities, Simon Pearson, to talk to us about World Book Day. Thank you, Mark. Um, well, it's ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to give this presentation. It's going to be a brief history of the book, so I'm going to try and fit it in for 15 minutes. Uh, could we have the first slide, please, Mark? This is called a brief history of the book, and the keyword there is brief. Next slide, please, Mark. Can we have the next? Oh, right. Yes, in the beginning there was papyrus. Um, actually, that's not totally true. The papyrus paper was associated with the ancient uh, Egyptians. Uh, papyrus was uh, a reed. It was made from reeds growing on the banks of the Nile. Uh, we're talking there going back to about 3000 years, but actually before papyrus, everyone thinks that papyrus really was the beginnings of kind of writing. There were the Sumerians. The Sumerians wrote on tablets of stone or clay. Imagine having to cart that around to your lessons, a tablet of stone so you could write on it. So. Um, the, I said here the earliest book, the books were in the form of papyrus scrolls, which survived because of the dry climate in ancient Egypt. Next slide, please, Mark. Right here, this is about the book publishing industry. This is the book publishing industry as we know it today, it began in the first century BC with the Romans. So here we have scrolls. Um, the publication of books, what we're seeing here really is the beginnings of libraries. The, the Romans invented the concept of a public library, that books um, should be accessible to everyone. If you are a, a Roman citizen, you should have access to books. Uh, these books, of course, were not produced on paper. They were using here uh, parchment, which is animal skin, and they were in the form of books, oh, sorry, scrolls. So uh, this is really the beginnings of the publishing industry and it began with the Romans. So whenever you want to know what did the Romans ever do for us? Well, there you go, libraries. Next slide, please, Mark. Ah, oh, now this is a key moment. The invention of paper. We're talking here about 100 BC. BC is, means before Christ. So this is the calendar we're using here. Uh, paper was one of China's four great inventions, the compass, gunpowder and printing of the other three. Um, and the person who invented, the person who's credited with inventing paper is a government official called Tse Lun. I hope my pronunciation is good there, my Chinese pronunciation. Tse Lun, he was a government official and he made paper out of mulberry bark. The, the the mulberry tree and out of the bark and also hemp rags. So these hemp was like a sort of uh, primitive fabric. 
so basically old clothes, and it'd be soaked in water and then eventually dried out, and there we have paper. So the, this is the invention of paper, a key moment in the history of the book. Can we have the next slide, please? The next key moment in the uh, history of the book really is the use of wood block printing, wood block printing. We're talking here about 650 AD, Tibetan monks were using wood blocks printing. These would be um, a whole sentence on, on a piece of wood um, and they were using them to uh, write down prayers. So this is really the beginnings here of printing and then that developed from there it developed into movable typeface. There we have uh, an image there of movable typeface. Um, the Chinese originally used porcelain for their typeface though not wood or metal but porcelain which is like a kind of china and uh, we're looking there about AD 1050. So uh, the AD is often called the, the, the common era there. So uh, AD 1050. Can we have the next slide, please? Now this is um, libraries. Libraries and books go together. And this is one of the great libraries of world history. Um, and it's, it's taken on a kind of mythological legendary aspect. The great library of Alexandria. Alexandria, as you know, is in the north of Egypt. It was the it was a great cultural center of classical civilization colonized by the, the Greeks and then the Romans later. And the library at Alexandria was one of the largest and most significant libraries of the ancient world. And it was full of scrolls. Remember, scrolls would have been made out of parchment animal skins. Imagine that going into a library full of scrolls smelling of dead animal. Uh, and this was one of the great uh, libraries of the ancient world. It was said that all the knowledge of the world was, was in this one place, this one library. Actually, they believe that it was a series of libraries, but it's been um, turned into this kind of magical library, one place where all these books were stored. Uh, can we have the next uh, slide, please, Mark? Oh dear, what happened? Oh dear, um, a fire at the library about 2000 years ago has led to the loss of countless masterpieces of classical literature. Um, hundreds of plays were lost from, from the classical world, plays by Euripides, Socrates, tragedies, comedies, um, works by Aristotle, some of the great um, works of world literature, classical literature were lost in the Great Fire. So it just shows you um, always keep a copy. That's my motto, uh, paper or parchment is very combustible. And that was one of the great disasters of uh, of the time, the, the loss of all these uh, works of great literature. Uh, and they reckon that was about 2000 years ago. Maybe again, it might have been turned into a kind of a myth or a legend. Maybe there was a series of fires and Julius Caesar is thought to be responsible for one of the fires. Um, but anyway, we think of it as this great conflagration, uh, which is there on the slide. We have the next slide, please, Mark. Ah, now we're getting into the uh, early modern period, uh, 1450 in Europe, the invention of mechanical metal movable type printing. That's a bit of a mouthful, but the key word there is uh, metal and movable because metal typeface meant that it was very durable and it was movable. So you could use the same fonts uh, for different uh, uh, sentences. Um, you could uh, this led to really uh, a, a revolution in human communication. It meant really the beginnings of the mass production of books. If you think about it before the printing press, books were written in monasteries uh, or um, uh, by monks. Uh, so they were called scriptoriums. These, these were writing places where monks would write away on parchment. Uh, and what we're seeing here really is um, uh, a communications revolution. And of course, what printing needs is paper. Print Paper had been introduced into Europe about 1250 AD, really quite late on, if you think about it, 1250 AD. And uh, it was introduced from Egypt into Europe via Italy. Italy was the center of paper manufacturing. And then of course it spread through Europe, but paper was expensive. You know, it was expensive stuff. Um, when Shakespeare wrote his plays, he, he, he would reuse paper. You know, you wouldn't just write something and then throw it away. It would be used and reused. 
Um, so paper was really quite expensive um, a commodity, but it, it was introduced in about the 13th century, mid 13th century. But this is one of the key moments. Uh, Gutenberg um, is credited with the uh, invention of the printing press. Uh, but of course, the printing press really had, had existed earlier in, in China. But uh, this is in Europe. And of course, this paved the way for the Reformation because it meant that pamphlets could be mass produced and printed and disseminated. It meant that the Bible could be translated into uh, uh, not just from, you know, from, from, from Latin or from Greek, but into um, the, the, the native languages of countries around Europe. So it really paved the way for the Renaissance and the Reformation, a key moment in the history of the book. Uh, can we have the next uh, slide, please? I'm galloping through this because I've got to finish by 12. Okay, 1623, uh, 1623. This is a key moment in world literature, not just English literature. It's the publication of Shakespeare's plays, the, the, the collection. Not Actually, not all the plays are in there, but the vast majority are. And this was 1623. This was seven years after Shakespeare's death and it was put together by his friends. It's called The First Folio, and this is one of the world's most valuable books. We're talking about six, seven million pounds when one of these books comes onto the market. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a massive collection of, of first folios in the Folger Library in America. 18 of Shakespeare's plays were published for the very first time in the first folio. So imagine that, um, a play like Macbeth, uh, may not have survived. It hadn't been for the fact that his friends, seven years after his death, decided to print his work. And um, some of uh, many plays from this period, this early modern period, were lost because they were never printed. They, they just existed in manuscript form on paper. So printing is a great way of preserving a great writer's uh, work. And Shakespeare's work has gone around all around the world and changed uh, world history and has touched many, many, many millions of people's lives. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Ah, now this is one of my favourite figures from the 18th century. Uh, Dr Johnson. There's a very funny sketch of Dr Johnson. If you want to see a funny sketch, I haven't got the link here, but it's on YouTube. And if you put in Black Adder YouTube, Dr Johnson, you'll find it because this was the 1755 publication of Dr Johnson's dictionary, which revolutionised the English language. It introduced the concept of standard English because what it did was it standardised the spelling and through that the pronunciation of words. So people wanted to speak like the dictionary and they would consult the dictionary and it would help with, you know, obviously with spelling because it's standardized spelling, but it also standardized pronunciation. Uh, next slide, please. Just some quick facts about Dr. Johnson's dictionary. It took him nine years to compile 40,000 definitions. It played a key role in the standardization of English spelling. And because people wanted to speak like the dictionary, it introduced the concept of correct pronunciation or what we now call standard pronunciation. OK, so um, it, it, it helped to, you know, in a way, what, what it created in English society was a kind of snobbery about language because people wanted to speak correctly and they would consult the dictionary to look at the, the spelling of a word and from that work out the pronunciation. Uh, next slide, please. 19th century, we've got in the 19th century popular writers like Charles Dickens. Now um, we have the public libraries. Charles Dickens wrote his novels usually in three volume forms. So you would have to buy volume one, two and three to read one of his books. And this was partly dictated by the public libraries. Uh, Dickens really was a literary superstar uh, of his time. People would, you know, it'd be national news when one of his um, they would suspend Parliament when one of his books would be published. Um, it would be it would be um, read round the fireplace of work by Charles Dickens. So what we're seeing here really is through the mass production of books, um, books going through all really the social classes from 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 the top through to the bottom, really uh, the beginnings of popular writers uh, uh, and the kind of the idea of the writer as a literary superstar. So Dickens is a key figure in this. And of course, Dickens invents Christmas, doesn't he, with Christmas Carol. I hope some of you have seen the film or read the book. The, the invention of Christmas through a, a novel, short novel like the Christmas Carol. 
Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Ah, we're coming to the end now. Now, in the 20th century, some people didn't like books. These are the Nazis burning books. And uh, there were books that were considered to be dangerous ideologically and would be publicly burned. And of course, books are very combustible. So the idea of burning books is a very, very emotive um, image, this image here, because it's about authority, state authority, trying to stamp out diversity and free opinions of ideas. So um, you can always tell if a dictatorship or a, or a particular political regime is dangerous because it burns books. And there's a famous quote here, where they, where they burn books, they will in the end burn human beings too, from Heinrich Hein, uh, a German writer. Uh, last slide, please. I've got one minute left, so I'm on time. Right. OK, finally, digital books. OK, books are the e-book. I remember reading about this in the early 90s, thinking, oh, no, people won't want to read books on, on you know, some electronic device. But how wrong I was. Uh, this was in 2007. 2007, they launched, Amazon launched the Kindle. And within five and a half hours, Kindles had sold out. And there were 80,000 volumes you could download on the very first edition of the Kindle. So there is the Kindle. So, but books still survive. People still want to buy books. Uh, the book as a physical object has still survived and they coexist. So um, the book as a physical object, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an object that exists in three dimensions, is still alive and kicking. And digital media has not spelled the end of the book, I'm very glad to say, because I love books as a kind of physical object. Um, as a 3D experience and a book is something that you can pass on to your friends, family, uh, whereas you can't really do the same thing can you with a download. So that's enough for me, um, it's now one minute past 12, uh, I'm going to finish up and I, um, I hope that all of you will buy a book uh, in the not too distant future because this is World Book Day. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you so, Thank much, you so Simon, much Simon for that. Uh, I will leave the chat open for a bit and if anyone wants to put a book recommendation in there for those people who are still there, throw the book that you're reading in the chat and uh, keep an eye out. Maybe you've got something you think is a must read. Uh, definitely, I will start uh, I will start putting putting the everyone's book recommendations out. Uh, have a great World Book Day and have a great day everyone. Uh, keep an eye out for your favourite book in the chat.